So I started every shooting day, as you know, with a five mile run. And good gracious me, what a place to go running in. We're staying in a, uh, an eco lodge, which we'll uh, do a little tour of, but it's, it's just epic. I'm really, really lucky, as I always say, to be doing this. And uh, today I'm shooting Drumland Rig. We're doing a mix of uh, pheasants and partridges and uh, I shot there on Monday for the first time ever. It was epic. Yeah, just really, really looking forward to getting out there and excited to, to be doing this. Fibre woods only. The, so we've got to do the, the three, three pheasant drives probably, then a partridge drive. As you see, the pheasants are probably more important than the fibre woods because we're in fields and I'm... So, uh, as I say, the main thing is enjoy the day. Has anybody any shooting the lake? Oh, that's well. <laughs> Same again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one. Uh, what? Tony, Mike, are you? Right, so, first drive at Drumland Rig today. <laughs> Looks pretty epic, to be honest. Next gun, just to your left. Yeah, not far. You know, weather-wise today, I'd say it's pretty close to being ideal. It might, uh, might be a tad bit windy, but not too bad anywhere at the moment. Over uh, overcast day, which is perfect. No sun, and the rain is not here yet. Let's hope, hope that uh, it stays off. And uh, yeah, pretty much a perfect pheasant stroke partridge flying day. So yeah, you know, I, um, I use quite a few different pairs of guns as, as we've all seen on the various videos, but uh, today we've got um, the K80 Super Sports out. Um, big heavy, heavy gun and uh, all that built in lead. Should be, uh, you know, sort of ideal gun for uh, the height of these birds. First bird that's just come out of the morning. That's got to have been Hugo. 70, 80, 75 yards up. Somewhere between 70, 80 yards. It didn't get hit, but you've got to have a few of those to be able to start to see a picture. But uh, wow, we. <laughs> this looks like it's going to be pretty bloody good. Look at this lot. You know, like, what are they coming out of? No cover crop up there. You can shoot one in ten of these, you're doing well. I'm fucking close to them, and I'm not close to Bill. Well, let's just see what happens. The size of pheasant is and how small this, they really are when they're that this high. You know, some of the problem is just actually finding a line on them.
over. Beauty out to the right. Come on. This doesn't be crazy, this is slow. Utterly superb. I mean, these are as good a pheasants you're going to get anywhere in the country. Grise Mountain. There's a beauty coming now. Bloody good, bloody good. First time through them the other day. So, I have three, three nice drives. Oh, that's beautiful. It's a nice shooting there. Yeah, some monsters coming down there, and some monsters being missed, and that's what you've come to do. Yeah. Then there were monsters. Oh, the yeah, there's no, there's, you're okay to miss those. They're yeah. absolutely fine, yeah. bloody hell. As long as you get a few of them, you're like, dunk. Yeah, exactly. Bath birds, sir. Huh? No. Good. Yeah, that's what we've come for. Come on. Come on, Basically 500 yards to the top of the hill, and there's a great big hill at the back <coughs> with plenty of roost in the middle. It has to work. It's as simple. Fishing what they coat and leggings. And it does. It's, it's coming over here. The thing is, they're hungry. So they'll keep them sharp. To get bugs up there, they've got to be sharp. Just shot that. Until we get the other. Got no, no, the F6. Seven. One in. Bobby's motor, isn't it? The rain has started, and I'm have a feeling it's pretty much set in. Uh, we've finished the first drive now, off to the second. And uh, what we just found out from Rab is that that's the first time they've ever done that drive. It's not just a new drive, it's the first time they've ever done that drive. So it's just a, just a, a, a wonderful thing to see, an amazing keeper like Rab to be able to, to do that first time. So we're on the second drive. I'm actually shooting back gun here, which can be good and bad. It's bad when they're bloody shooting well. It's obviously good when they're not, because then I can uh, wipe their eyes. That would have been a screamer. That would have been a screamer, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't get the line. <laughs>
Fantastic present. Motionless. Fantastic drive. Good 50 to 60 yard target. Consistent. And uh, shooting some good ones. Here's, here's one that comes now. Come on. <laughs> that beast, Drumland Rig Pheasant. Yeah. Oh! That was quick. The first saw it. So that's what high bird shooting is, is all about. You're not going to consistently kill them, but when you do hit them, and you know, if you're hitting one in six, you know, that's what I mean by consistent on these birds. You're doing really well. And you know, I was shooting, I had some spells there where I shot really well, and then you know, we'd, we'd lose them for three or four birds. And uh, your margin of error on this stuff is tiny. So that was a superb drive. I mean, blimey, that's as good, once again as good as you're going to get anywhere in the in the country on the on the highest highest pheasant drives. So once again, well done, Rab. You can hear me on both sides. You can hear me going. Bullocks, <laughs> and also yes, you know, because we're doing we're doing something that you you know if you do hit one of those big ones, yeah, I'll, you know, I want to hear everyone go, wow, you just did that. You know, read about this stuff for 20, 30 years ago. And now to do it is just such an honour and privilege. It's such an awesome sport uh, and, and hobby. And um, just, you know, a lovely way to spend a day and shooting at these most ridiculously high targets, pheasants that, you know, once again, you haven't come here to try and hit 100% of them. It, it's not a, you know, it's not a competition. It, it's about really enjoying the day uh, and, and making the most out of your ability to be able to, to shoot these. So, you know, once again, I'm just very, very lucky to do this. I always dreamt about doing this and now I do it. And uh, it's just great. I run five miles every morning. So do you play rugby at Ampleforks? Yeah. With that, first of all. Oh yes, all a bit now. And, but this is my first full season Excuse here. Excuse me, Rob, I'll have one that's not been... Uh, started to get away. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Dad bought me uh, a 28 bore when I was, um, I was about eight years old. And, you know, ever since then, I've just loved anything to do with shooting and guns. And it probably did take me about a year to hit anything. That was probably a starling. 
fired hundreds and hundreds of cartridges at things. Uh, but that's how I, how I sort of was brought up or taught myself how to shoot was 28 bore and then progressing on to uh, a 20 bore side by side and then I had a 12 bore browning. And uh, all I do is go pigeon and crow shooting. And slowly but surely I started to realize how to, how to shoot and hit stuff. Um, you know, and occasionally I'd get go with dad on a, on a small farm pheasant shoot and shoot a few pheasants up until I was 18, 19. And, uh, you know, a pheasant comes out, that's, that, those are the ones, you know, those shoots, that's when you shoot it. It doesn't matter where it is or how it is, as long as it's safe. But it's the pigeons that I really sort of took to and understood how to shoot, you know, long, far, high stuff. Um, and yeah, grew up. That, that you know, that's how I grew up shooting. I have to say, I love it all. I love a love a high partridge. Love the monster pheasants. Love pigeon shooting. Rabbiting. I did loads of that when I was a boy. Here we go. Up. Oh, 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 that's a good one. Come on, come on. Just come through it. Just come through it. First barrel, then. Here we go. Oh, some monsters. Oh. This is some of the best pheasants we've ever had. It all looked right. It did feel, it, it felt right. Right. <laughs> right, so great example, hero to zero. Shoot a monster and then th miss three. But you know, once again, you don't come here to shoot everything, but just have to hit that one biggie and boom. What a drive, electric. Well, I wouldn't say we've got too many left in the bag, so probably be a small drive at the end, which is fine. We won't do that. I'm not rigging it, honestly. So up, there we are. Up the the arm and just oh, yeah. it. Mm -hmm. and those bastards just do the same thing every time. And it's, it's odd, isn't it, compared? Look at the. What do you think it is? But I'm bang, 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 bang. Stephen, you're not trying to hit them. <laughs> that was the first thing. So that could have put me off. I said, I'm doing my very best. So <laughs> right, so we're on the last drive of the day. Weather's getting uh, pretty crappy, but perfect for shooting. And uh, last drive's partridges. Here's a beauty. Oh, oh, come on. They're pulling the, uh, the drive in from here, pushing it up there, and then we're going to finish with that coming back over. So based on uh, what I can see backwards and forwards, these are going to be pretty bloody high. Here they come, here they come. Absolutely. Come behind. Oh, 
partridge down in the West Country. Shot some mega partridges at Sweet Lamb. Um, and, you know, the mega partridges at the Questa, and these are bloody brilliant. going to bring this hopefully and they're going to come off the top of that mound and they should be hopefully out of range out of range partridge you know the difference with with a partridge to a pheasant is you know it does need one or two pellets and that thing just wraps up oh look at that on your left hi oh Come on, baby. Now, this, is, this has got to mark as one of our best days out. Yeah. I was thinking it's got to be top three you know. of all the hundreds of millions of days shooting we've had. So there's, on a lump. <laughs> there's, there's a big partner in crime and there's this man, Hugo Hurd. We have such a good laugh together. And yeah, you know, there's one of the reasons I shoot well. Yeah, I have to do it. But guess what? I've got a great guy that helps me through the thick and thin. And, you know, when it does fall to pieces, he knows exactly how I shoot and gets me back there. So we had a great day. This is probably, we we're just saying, top three of all the day shooting I've ever had birds have been extreme beyond imagine and um, off to lunch <laughs>